Imagine you could read incredibly fast so that you could read an article that would normally take you like half an hour in just a few minutes. So some of you have this potential. Others can at least improve. There is this experiment which has been conducted and quoted for many years by the Gallup Research Company. And it's about speed reading. It's about the ability to read fast. And um, they grouped high school students, about 15 years old, in two groups. The one group were the average readers, and the other was the strong readers who could already read very fast. Then both groups went through a speed reading seminar, so they learned how to read, real, to read really fast. So what happened to the average group? They increased their speed by more than 60%. Now the other group where speed reading was already a strength, they went through exactly the same training. What do you think? What happened? Did they not improve? Did they improve, but to a lesser extent, or did they improve even more? I'm asking those of you who believe that they improved by less than 60%, please raise your hands now. Thank you. And all those who believe that they improved even more, despite the fact that speed reading was already a strength, please raise your hands now. It's a minority in this case. The minority is right. This other group increased by more than 700%. They could now read 2,900 words per minute on average, which means that for an article that took them half an hour before they did the training, afterwards they could read it in just a few minutes. What is remarkable about this experiment? Well, it probably does not work with any kind of skill, but what is really remarkable is that there seems to be almost no limit to what our brain can achieve. And the other remarkable thing is that if you're training something where you're already good at, when you're strengthening a strength, then this training is much more effective. The idea of strengthening strength has already been applied successfully in a number of business organizations. 90% of the Fortune 500 companies are using a strength finder. They want to know where the individual strengths of their employees are. At Red Bull, the energy drink company, we have been using the concept of strengthening strengths very successfully for many years now, and it includes identifying where the strengths are, putting you on projects where you can use your individual strengths, and this is important, focusing your training on those areas where you are already strong. A percentage of about 80% focus on strengths and only 20% of weakness is ideal. The idea of strengthening strength is also very successful in the world of sports, in competitive sports, in team sports. An extreme example is an American football team. They have very different skills, very different strengths. The kicker, the strength of the kicker is to kick the ball incredibly far and very accurately. That's his key strength and he's focusing his training on becoming even better on this strength. If he focused his training on one of his weaknesses, like tackling this big guy running towards him, then the whole team would suffer and never win the Super Bowl. Our society is also a team and we all benefit from the fact that we are so different, that our strengths are so different. And therefore it makes so much more sense that we further develop our individual strengths. But what about our schools? Do you believe, when you think of your school, that the concept of strengthening strength has been applied at your school? 
I had a chance to put this question to one more than, more than 1,000 students in my leadership classes here in St. Gallen and in Vienna at the VU and in Leipzig at HHL. So, was the concept of strengthening strengths applied at your school? And 90% of them answered, nope. Absolutely not. The opposite was the case. So they identify a weakness, and then you focus on getting this weakness to at least an average level. Just a few of them, they responded, well, I was lucky. I had this mentor. And this mentor told me about my individual talent, about my strength, and he or her helped me develop this. And this is probably why I'm here, why I made it to university. That's what they say. Our daughter, she almost, almost became a victim of our school system at the age of nine. Because she came home crying after she just failed a maths exam. But as well, we tried to be modern parents. Um, we tried to apply an innovative educational concept on her. We decided that we go out and celebrate with her. So we took her to her favorite restaurant and she got her Wiener Schnitzel and her French fries. And we spoke about, um, you know, it's important to fail. And it's also important that you always do your best and you stand up and you learn out of this. And her tears were dried and we thought like we have, had solved the situation until next day. I go to our supermarket and at the cashier there's this lady approaching me. I'm so sorry about what happened to your daughter. And I go like, really? I mean, it was just a mass exam. No, you must be so desperate now. Not really. But will, what will you do now? And you know what? She was absolutely right. Because what, what, what was the consequence of failing one math exam? She could not make it to the high school of her choice. And much more painfully, it would have meant a school career focusing on the subject of mathematics, additional learning support there on the subject of her weakness, which she really did not like. Does this story somehow sound familiar to you? Maybe you know somebody who had difficulties in mathematics and how much focus was then set on this topic? We know that uh, parents in Austria and in Switzerland invest more than 100 million euros every year on additional learning support, almost half of them focusing on mathematics. In Germany, it's more than one billion. And I believe this is the biggest mistake that we can do in our educational system. So, what happened to my daughter? In her case, her educational story got a happy end, but only because we are privileged. And we were able to send her to an international school, to St. Gilden International School, which is claiming to develop talents. And after a couple of months, there was the first student teacher parent feedback meeting. And we had mixed feelings. So would they speak about mathematics again? And I'll never forget the feedback we received on this occasion because the teacher said, did you realize that your daughter is exceptionally talented in acting? Uh, really? Uh, yes. And we want to give her additional support in, in drama. We have this drama teacher and he wants her to be part of this afternoon activity, and we want to focus on this strength. And we were asking, and what about mathematics? <laughs> Don't worry. It's important now that she has her success stories, that she enjoys coming to school. After a while, she will even get better in languages, and in the end, also in mathematics. And that's exactly what happened. In the end, she finished school, her IB, International Baccalaureate, with very good grades in drama, in languages, average grades in mathematics. And today she's living her dream as a theater actress in Vienna. And thus we parents, we fell so much in love with this school because it was the first time ever 
that we saw the concept of strengthening strength being applied on the human being, which has the biggest value for us and a special place in our hearts. And we are so much in love with this school that at a later point in time, when the school almost failed because the owner and investment fund did not make any money with it and wanted to close it down, we decided, a number of parents, to buy our school <laughs> for one euro and taking over a lot of debt. And probably one of the first parent buyouts in the history of education. <laughs> And we turned it into a non-profit organization. And myself, I decided to quit my job, my dream job on the board of Red Bull to work pro bono for the school, which is, by the way, not very smart to do, quitting a well-paid job in order to work, work pro bono. But I had to do it. I had to follow my passion. I had to follow the butterflies in my stomach. And we were able to grant scholarships to at least one third of the students because school fees are very expensive. And today, school is almost full. It's, a, um, it's being regarded as one of the best schools maybe in, in Europe. But it's breaking my heart. It's breaking my heart that we cannot give more children access to a school like this. And we cannot grant more scholarships because I deeply believe that every single child is entitled to receive excellent education, to identify their talents, to develop them, and to find a lifelong, a lifelong love of learning. So, what can we do? School reform from above? Well, the last significant school reform that happened in my country was more than 200 years ago under Queen Maria Theresia. So maybe we should not wait for this, but there is something that we can do in our circle of influence. Everywhere when we can influence young people, be it at our university, at our school, in our class, in our family, with our brothers and sisters, with anybody, there's something we can do. And you know what we do? We're starting a revolution. Right now, from here. And I get some strange looks now, I know, because maybe that's not what you expected when you were coming here to the Audi Max. And maybe you think, if I had known that I would go to a revolution today, I would have dressed up differently. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll not go demonstrating. But what we do is a gentle, revolution in our minds. It's a shift in our mindset, away from focusing on the weaknesses over to focusing on the strengths. So, what is the first step? Please think of a child of, or of a young person, maybe your child, maybe your younger brother, maybe your younger sister, maybe somebody you teach, maybe somebody you like, maybe a fellow colleague here at the university, and think of this person that has a place in your heart. And now think of the key strengths that this person has. And then tell them if you're able to do that, then you're going to have this overwhelming feeling of sense in your stomach, like butterflies flying around in your stomach. When you see those eyes shine, when you're able to give wings to talents, and you're going to be a carrier of a gentle revolution. Last question. So, what do we do in case we do not find any strength in a child whatsoever? Well, I once had the chance to ask exactly this question to a very experienced headmaster of an international school 
in Norway. And the moment I asked this question, I already felt very naive and small, a bit like a hobbit, <laughs> looking up to Gandalf, the magician. And this headmaster, he was standing up in front of me, and with thunder in his voice, he replied, Manfred, if you do not see the strength in a child, you must look much deeper. Thank you very much. Thank you.